Welcome to another video on Base Bellagio. Today we are going to review three comfy games that I've been playing this spring. All three of these games are technically farming the sims, but they are very different from each other. Let's start with the baseline, which is Stardew Valley. They just had a 1.6 update, added a bunch of new stuff to the game, especially Endgame. And this game is the staple of comfy games. It is a clone of old school Harvest Moon style games. You run a farm, you can ranch animals, you can get married, have kids, you can fish in this game. There is a combat system and a dungeon diving system, and even later on in the game, an endless dungeon that you can go to and farm animals. You make relationships in the game with townsfolk, make friends that unlock new recipes, different things you could get. There are two main branching story arcs, one being the community center, which you collect items throughout the years to complete the community center. And then there's also the Jojo Mart path, which you basically pay money to complete the game. This game is very fun, very comfy, but there are a couple downsides compared to the other two games. Mainly, this game has a somewhat of a loose deadline. With the three-year mark, your grandfather's ghost returns and grades your farm, but you can keep playing after to get the perfect score to get better endgame content. This game, Stardew Valley, really makes you work in terms of a deadline every day. You have to go home and sleep to save the game. It's not really a game that you could pick up and play on a lunch break or if you're busy. This game you have to play through a full day and go to bed to save the game. Also, this game, the way you water your crops, feed the animals, there are chores, and it does feel like that at times. There are also a few missable interactions, not becoming friends with certain people at certain times. But for the most part, you won't miss much, and there is no cut content if you don't complete something. But for some reason, out of the three games we are reviewing, this one does seem like the most busy work. The next game in comparison is Kinseed, or Kindseed, or as I like to call it, Kinsneed. This game, to put it in one word, is charming. It is extremely comfy graphics, very beautiful art style. You can also get married, have kids, raise crops, raise animals. But what sets this game apart differently than Stardew Valley is I would consider this game a gathering simulator. You are going to be exploring a massive world, gathering items everywhere. As a matter of fact, you are gathering items and foraging more than even farming. The farming is extremely easy. They don't really punish you too much if you miss a day watering. The watering is extremely easy. Your watering can has basically infinite water. Feeding animals is extremely easy. You can even miss a couple days as they have a fullness meter and a happiness meter. This game you will spend more time exploring a richly deep world, a lot of different towns, becoming friends with a lot of different townsfolk. And the friends in this game matter, in my opinion, more than Stardew Valley because you need your friends to help you build stuff. You become friends with someone and then you could use them to build upgrades, houses, things on your farm, things around the world like broken bridges, and even broken houses that when you repair, new people move in. When you befriend people, sometimes you get recipes and new information about other people. Very interesting game. This game has a mechanic in it that you are supposed to play multi-generationally. So your character grows old, they die, you then you play as your son or daughter, or even your adopted kid, and you go on for multi-generations. The townsfolk are multi-generational. They will grow old, they will pass away, and it's a very interesting mechanic. There's also a somewhat deep story, and I don't want to spoil much, but it's much more 
deeper and even more serious than Stardew Valley as you are essentially selling your soul. Very interesting stuff and you could pay with years of your life to gain unique items and magical items. Again, it doesn't quite matter much because you always could play as your son or daughter and keep going on with your lineage. You're building like a legacy, a legend legacy. I am really enjoying Kinseed. Very relaxing game. You could save your game anywhere that there's a campfire. You don't even have to go home to end the day. You choose how long you sleep for. And when you're an adult, you don't even have to sleep. This game doesn't even have a stamina meter, as you could do all the work and all the things that you'd like without growing tired. Very comfy game, highly recommend it, and it's even on GOG's website, and you can find it out there for highly discount prices. As a matter of fact, all three of these games, including Stardew Valley, is on GOG's website, and you can find them on the internet for value, if you know what I'm saying. The last game we're going to review is Graveyard Keeper. This game is extremely funny, dark humor, made by a good game dev, and if you know there are other games out there, they are very similar in art style and humor and script writing. Games like Punch Club and Punch Club 2 as well as a few other games these people make, and I really enjoy their games. Graveyard Keeper is different from Punch Club, as it's an actual world that you walk around in, explore, very similar to like a Stardew Valley. There is farming in this game. You have tasks of running a graveyard, doing autopsies on bodies, cleaning up the body good enough to increase your graveyard's reputation, and you will be running a church, running a cult, doing a whole bunch of unique things in terms of the comfy game simulation genre, aka the farming genre. What sets Graveyard Keeper apart is you do have a stamina meter, you run out of stamina, you have to rest or eat food, but there is no deadlines in this game. This game will actually make you feel like you have to do a bunch of stuff but there are no consequences, no deadlines. You could play this game for infinite amount of time and do nothing and you will not be punished for it. You don't even have to water your crops to grow food. You can hold off on collecting bodies by not feeding your donkey, who's a communist by the way, and talks to you. Carrots, he demands carrots for tribute. Hilarious writing. This game, because there's so much to do, so many things to accomplish, that's the only thing that makes you feel pressured to do it. But the community of this game tells people all the time that if you feel pressured, if you feel like you're working too hard, to literally take days off and just watch your crops grow, or go fishing, or go to the dungeon and fight monsters, you really have no deadlines in this game, and I absolutely love this game for that. You will be building various machines, collecting items, chopping down trees, mining rocks and iron ore and other ores to build up your farm, basically your homestead, and upgrade your graveyard, run a church, research items, and there's even good DLC for this game that highly expands the game even further. You will never run out of things to do in this game. Very comfy game, highly recommended, very different than Stardew Valley, but still a comfy game. Now there are many other games in this genre out there that I have played and not have played. These three, in my opinion, are the top three contenders for games that you should try out of this genre. There's a game coming out in the future called Chef RPG. I'm looking forward to that. It looks very interesting where you run a restaurant. Same genre of games. We will review that when the game releases. It's not out yet. 
Let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you've played these games, if you like comfy games, if you like the farming genre. I grew up playing Harvest Moon and these games definitely are interesting to me and I play them once in a blue moon. And this spring I've played all three of these titles. I recommend all of them. In terms of comfiness factor, Stardew Valley would be the most intense in terms of chores and keeping your farm running. Then I would say Graveyard Keeper, just for the sheer fact there's a stamina bar and all the stuff you do, you feel like you have to accomplish these things, but there's no penalty. You could take weeks off in the game and not be penalized for it. And then Kinseed or Kinsneed is my favorite way to pronounce it. This game is huge. A lot of things to do. Big end game. You can even run shops and sell things out of a shop. Very interesting title. Highly recommend it. Let me know what you think down below and thank you for watching.